everyone. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the WIC animation editor and do one of the classic bouncing ball exercises. So this first video is going to be just the setup of um, the stage, um, all the settings in the WIC editor, um, and a couple of brush settings. And then um, I'll probably see if I can do like just the keyframes, and then, um, then we'll move into a, a second and or possibly a third video, so we'll see. Um, okay, so hopefully uh, you can see everything on my screen. There we go. All right, so I'm starting off at wikeditor.com, uh, and I'm starting off from scratch. So the first thing I like to do is come up here on the very top right, click on the gear, and go ahead and name my project. Uh, you can change your background and color. I'm going to stick with white for now. 12 frames per second is good. Everything else looks good. Um, I'm going to press apply. And then I'm going to go to the editor and I'm going to change the onion skinning style to tint. Um, I like being able to see the two different colors. The red will be my um, behind frames and the blue will be my forward frames. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close that. Okay, I've got my uh, first layer down here, and that's going to end up being my uh, ground. So I'll just do that. I'll grab my line tool, and um, this is the, uh, the stroke color here. I'll just keep it at black, and I'll maybe change the thickness of the line to 2. And I'll go ahead and just click and drag it across, and something like that. Yeah. Make it a little bit more noticeable. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, and I'll just go ahead and hit save, and I'll just save um, pretty regularly. Uh, now, one thing that the WIC editor does, it's not the worst thing in the world, but I'm not in love with it, um, is that every time you save, um, it just downloads a file. So that's fine, because I don't think that they have any kind of cloud service or anything like that, um, which is okay. Um, but it just means that if you save frequently that you're going to end up with um, a very full downloads folder. It's no big deal. You just have to make sure that you go in there and every once in a while you clean them up and you delete some of the older ones and you keep the newer ones. And the saved files are named with the project name and the um, time and date uh, stamp. So that way you can tell which ones are the more recent ones. Um, and I'd rather have more copies than less just for backup. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on this button here to recenter. There we go. And I'm going to make a new layer. And this is going to be my um, motion path. And this is going to be the arcing of the ball bouncing, starting up here on the top left and then going like that. Um, I found a uh, reference image of a bouncing ball. Um, and I put the frames in there just to make it easier. So as you can see, we're doing one, two, three bounces, technically four bounces. Um, so let's go ahead and set that up. So you could go ahead and grab the pencil tool and then just go ahead and manually draw it, right? And just something like this. And then just kind of keep going and then kind of keep going. And that's pretty good. Um, I kind of like taking the line tool and then using the line tool and the path cursor tool to make my curves uh, pretty exact. Um, so I'm going to start by dragging it right about here. And then I'll go ahead and drag a line like that. There we go. OK, so this is a really cool little technique. So now I'm going to grab the path cursor tool, which is A. I'm, I'm learning all my hotkeys. And then I'm going to come over here to the first one. I'm going to click and drag and just kind of bend it out. Now you can also put your mouse pointer on the um, outer edge and kind of drag it a little further off um, and drag it just what you want. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to arch up this arc here and then just click and drag connect, and then 
there we go, something like that. And because these are separate lines, I didn't just draw them, I can now get the cursor tool and I can click on it, I can you know, move it around, do whatever I want with it, I can click and drag on one of these four corners um, and size it. Now if you just click and drag, you could squash it and distort it. We don't want to do that. Um, so you hold down the shift key on the keyboard and you do shift, click and drag, and it will get um, bigger and smaller and it'll scale up uh, very nicely. So, okay, so I'm gonna do that one there. I'm gonna go a little bit smaller. I have found that when you use the cursor tool, you really have to get the mouse pointer right on the actual ink itself uh, to be able to click and drag and move it. But you can also use the arrow keys up and down, left and right, uh, and get it just the way you want. Okay, so that's good. Now I wanna make my next um, bounce arc. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, Command C, Command V, and I paste it on a uh, Windows machine or a Chromebook. You can press Control C. I'm gonna shift, drag it down, and get my second arc, something like that. That looks pretty good. And then, so that's this one here, and then my very last one, uh, which will end up going off screen. Again, copy, paste. Scale it on down, and then we'll have it kind of go off screen like that. So that looks pretty good. Um, I'll go ahead and hit save again. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make my final layer. Uh, before I make my final layer, I'm gonna come over here to the ground, and I'm gonna click here on the left-hand side, I'm gonna lock it, and I'll click on the motion path and lock it. That way I don't erase, I don't move, I don't um, edit in any kind of weird way, um, and we're pretty good to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, you'll see that I only see two layers, so what, what the heck? Well, if you come down here on the timeline and you scroll your mouse wheel down, you will see that the button here is there. You can also use this little scroll bar over here and do that, or you can put your mouse pointer right up here in between the timeline and the main workspace area, and you can click and you can drag it up, and that way you can always see it. But then you're seeing less of the um, stage here. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll down until I see that plus button, and this layer is going to be called my rough animation. And I'll just abbreviate it there. Okay, so that's my rough animation. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drag it and put it on top. Um, so I'm just gonna click, drag it up. Okay, good. And then just a couple more little things and then we'll end this video. So if I look at the reference image, this goes until 32 frames. And so I'm gonna kind of try to follow that as best as possible. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna take the ground layer and I'm gonna click and drag and extend it all the way to frame 32. There we go. So now it's just lasting the duration. And I'm going to do the exact same thing to the motion path. Click and drag, and then there we go. I'll now come back up here to my rough animation layer and click on the very first frame and create a keyframe there. And we're basically ready to draw. Um, in closing, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm going to end up using for my brush settings. Um, so that way you can set that up. And then the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll start actually adding in some keys. So um, you've got your brush tool and you've got your pencil tool. I'm actually gonna switch over to the pencil tool so I get a nice uh, thin line. I'm going to come here to the color picker and you'll see that we have the fill color and we have the stroke color. You wanna go to the stroke color because the pencil doesn't have a fill. I'm gonna stick with black and then right down here underneath the um, hue bar here or the rainbow bar, whatever you wanna call it, we have the opacity bar and it's at 100%. You can see right here it's a little tough, but you can see right here it says A, that means alpha, and that's the technical term for transparency, and it's set to 100%, so it's um, all the brush strokes are completely um, opaque. So if I go back up there and I click and I drag and I bring it down, so here's about 50%, so here's about 50%, and you'll see that when I overlap them, uh, they do build up, which is great, it's more like a natural um, pencil. I'm gonna go ahead and settle for about 25. And you can also type in your number um, and press return and uh, there you go. So 25 is pretty good, I feel pretty good about that. Um, now one last thing I'll do, and this was um, kind of reminded, uh, this was, uh, I was reminded by a student. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch my color from black 
And I'm going to go ahead and kind of go to sort of a throwback to the uh, animation blue uh, pencil. So I'm going to go ahead and choose um, animation blue. There we go. So, okay. So that's it. I'm going to grab the cursor tool and just select all of these scribble marks and delete them. And I'll go ahead and hit save. All right. In the next video, I'll um, draw some keyframes and we'll get going. Thanks very much. And I'll see you next time.